when I really first dedicated myself to LinkedIn, it was, gosh, it's only been maybe a year, year and a half ago. Now you were one of the first people that kept popping up day after day after day. Who is this Tony character? What's he all about? Spam, spam. Want to look into him. <laughs> and, um, but you actually have this really sort of sweet, unique story here. And, and, and one that I'd love for you to share with the audience about how that started. And, and there are roots that tie back to the pandemic. LinkedIn has been an interesting journey for me. I, I've been on that space 10 plus years uh, and really started to become very active seven, eight, nine years ago when I just, it was really when I started with Embry, we didn't have a robust recruiting department and I had to find people uh, in different markets. And listen, I'm in Texas, I'm from California. I don't know anyone in Texas. Uh, and I, you know, I'm overseeing San Antonio and Houston and I'm like, I know nobody. Right. Like I'm not involved in any associations. I'm from California. People are probably looking at me like, oh, he's from California. He'll go back soon, I'm sure. So um, so I had to start like utilizing and understanding the platform. And I realized very quickly that um, the most amount of candidate eyeballs are in just a few places. And LinkedIn was one of them. And so I started to play in that space and, and get creative with job posts and engagement. And, and I think I probably hearken back a little bit on my social media manager days about engagement and understanding how that works and how a, a social media conversation differs from a, from a real life conversation. There's different norms and there's different cadences and uses of, of, of script and words um, that you can often use to just kind of keep a quick interaction happening. And so, so I start to dabble and I start to get really successful at recruiting people through this platform. And I start to, I think before most, see the power of this platform, right? The, the, the power of, of connecting and, and networking and growing your network. And I quickly realized this is where the eyeballs are, right? Like the, I'm fishing where the fishes are uh, versus, you know, 20 people in a networking room. Like, okay, well, that's 20 people. I post something here. Back then I can get you know, I don't know, 100 impressions, 150 impressions, 250 impressions. I don't know, you know, super small scale at that time, but it was more than 25 people in a networking room, half of which are just, you know, the association people there, you know, facilitating the, the event. Right. So yeah, I was like, right. OK, well, this is a numbers game. It's a volume game. And I'm I think I'm pretty good at it with my background in social media and then just my, you know, relatability, you know, just natural gifts. And so, you know, so I start dabbling in the space and then for me, <clears throat> and it's actually a post that I'm sitting on today that I haven't posted yet, but the pandemic for some of you that know me um, was a complete game changer for me in a lot of ways. Um, and, and really the game changer was I, I was, I was entangled and ensnarled by, by fear of the virus uh, of other things. And, and I, I was not the person or the leader that I, I knew I had to be in that moment. And I knew big moments like this, crisis moments, uh, global moments, um, are when the best leaders rise. And uh, I, I didn't feel initially that I was rising to the occasion. And um, so I had to work through that process of entangling myself or unentangling myself um, untangling myself from fear and fear like a lot of other things can be an addiction and it can be incredibly entangling and if anyone knows if if you have kids if they've tangled laces to untangle that ball of a mess or if you have a daughter with wild hair like i do you know to untangle that is 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 a process and so i had to go through that process but in that process of untangling myself um uh a freedom and a, and a newfound um, liberation came from that. And I think we all realized as, as a country and I think the world that things could go sideways really fast and you only have one life to live and, and you have your truth and what you believe and, and why hold back now in speaking it or sharing it. And, and so I started to say, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. And I love quotes posted by Mark Twain and some of these, you know, other quotable folks, but I have a few things I'd like to say. And you know what, frankly, I don't care. I'm going to sign it and I'm going to make it my own thought because I have them. And I've worked through some things that, that has, have made me a better leader on the back end. And so I started to just with, I, I think, optimism and positivity <laughs> and sometimes a photo shoot with a smile, 
uh, put a quote uh, or two of what I really strongly felt about leadership and, and what was happening in our business and how we can overcome a lot of it. And I think both strategically and probably organically, it started to grow and build um, what you would call an audience or, or, or a community. And, um, and it's just sort of organically and naturally grown since then. I think my voice for those who have followed me for some time has evolved and probably matured a little bit and also become more poignant, um, hopefully uh, also uh, more clear uh, about what I believe and who I am uh, and who my family is as well. And, and they make a big impact in my life. And, and something also in that platform, which I was really encouraged and maybe emboldened to do I, early on in that, in that platform, if, if we all recall LinkedIn, you weren't supposed to talk about anything other than your job opening or business. Mm -hmm. um, and I quickly realized like, there's a lot more to our lives than just that. Uh, I also understood that nobody wanted LinkedIn to become Facebook and no one today does either. But, um, but I'm gonna talk about my family and I'm gonna talk about some of the emotions that maybe people in leadership positions are not willing to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think there is an audience that found that um, refreshing. And to this day, I think there's there's quite a few that find that vulnerability refreshing and encouraging. Um, yeah. And I think there's a big community that we're all dealing with a lot of the same things. You know, imposter syndrome is, is a real thing. Uh, burnout is a real thing, right? There's these things that are all happening that we're all experiencing at the same time. And why can't we talk about them? Today, it's a lot more, um, you know, it's a lot more accepting to be able to talk about a lot of these topics. But three years ago, four years ago, it wasn't. Let me tell you. Yeah.